Prime Network presents exclusive coverage of America's best racquetball. And today, from the Sports Mall in Salt Lake City, Utah, it's the men's and women's finals of the Ectalon AARA Junior Olympic Racquetball Championships. Featuring the women's final of the sixth seed, Letitia Bussell, against the number one seed, Elkova Isinogel. And the men's final of the eighth seed, Javad Agalu, against the third seed, Jason Menino. And you know, any time that you play for the junior national team and trying to get to the finals, the tension's tremendously thick. It's been all week, and it's no different today for the finals. Hi, everybody. I'm Jim Turner, your host for today's events, and we've got our normal, great expert analyst with us, Jim Heiser, who will be doing the men's finals coming up shortly. But first, it's the women's final, and they're on deck. And who better to go to than former six-time world champion Lynn Adams. And Lynn, we have a familiar name. Yes in the finals, and that's Alcova Isinogel. But what about the newcomer to the final setup? And of course, that's Letitia Bustle. Letitia's got a real smooth style. I got to see her for the first time yesterday. It was very impressive. She's almost 19 years old, out of Mountain Home, Idaho. And she had a good experience against Alcova in the World Championships, went tiebreaker with her, and discovered that she thinks that she has all the right stuff to actually win the match. In fact, I got to talk to Letitia earlier, and she shared some of her strategies for the upcoming match today. Okay, I'm going to use my, the back wall to my advantage because it's glass, and I'm going to use Z-serves and high Z-lobs, and probably some hard, hard drive serves. Well, Alcova Isinogel is the number one seed, and boy, is she experienced in all these high-pressure type games. On her way to Stanford, the question is, is this going to be a walkthrough or a real competitive match? Well, I hope it's a competitive match, um, but I'm going to have to go with Alcova on this. She has the experience with the crowd, with the tensions, with the TV and the, the problems that that causes, and she's just one tough player. And I got to talk to Alcova earlier about how she handled Letitia in the World Championships. I think it was just I played my game and I played smart. I didn't try to kill everything. I, it was a tiebreaker, so I didn't try to kill everything. I was mostly passing and hitting good shots and not playing really stupid, hitting a lot of ceiling balls and just in general playing a smart game. Jim Heiser is going to be bringing us some information from the sidelines during the women's finals. And the women's finals are up. Lynn Adams and I will be back with you in just a moment. A reminder, it's the women's finals championships here at the Sports Mall in Salt Lake City, Utah. Welcome back to the Sports Mall, everybody. I'm Jim Turner. We've got the Women's Junior Championships racquetball coming up. And of course, it's going to be a lot of fun. And Lynn Adams, we're all set to go with Letitia Bustle and Elkova Isinogel out of Auburn, California. It's going to be a lot of fun. Tom Neal is our referee. He's uh, getting the young ladies all set to go. There's a nice picture of Letitia Bustle. One might wonder, Lynn, the uh, butterflies that are going through her stomach. This is about <laughs> the first time for her to be big-time television in a big-time finals. She's very nervous. I talked to her a little bit earlier. I went down on the court while there were some things finishing up, and she's, her legs are shaking and her hands are shaking. She goes, are we going to start pretty soon? <laughs> well, and then we've got the real veteran, and there she is in the red shirt, Elkova Eisenogel. She's on her way to Stanford University, and also last night, at the awards banquet, she was named the Outstanding Junior Female Athlete of the Year. So we congratulate her on her awards and the both of them on their finals getting ready to go. Once again, Tom Neal out of Albuquerque, New Mexico is our referee on the day. And of course, the basic rules. Lynn, you're the expert on this game, just quickly. They're gonna play the best out of three to 15. Tiebreaker will be to 11. They only have to win by one point. Uh, you'll notice the, the broken dotted line on the court when the court view comes up. That is the five foot line, which means that the receiver cannot break the plane of that line uh, after the service hit until the ball either bounces or crosses that line. And of course, they're being introduced now by our referee, Tom Neal. They're both as nervous as they can be. And it's kind of neat, a very appreciative crowd. We've had over 600 tremendous uh, competitors here this week. We're down to the final two for the young ladies. 
It should be a lot of fun. Boy, this place has been so cooperative all week, and, and we really want to thank everybody involved. And, and the sports mall here in Salt Lake City has been absolutely terrific, and that's Brent Cook, the owner, and all of his fine staff at the sports mall for their friendliness, the hospitality, and you know what? The use of their court, because when you come into the court, they take it completely over. The members have to back off. Can't use the club hardly at all. So it's fun. And Lynn, we're ready to go. All right. Nice Nogle has the opening serve. She won it. And there we go. It's always nice to score the first point. Yes, it is. Get on the board. Ooh, I think I would appeal I, that I if I was Letitia. That looks short to me. Absolutely. 2-0. Both players have talked about the sidewall glass as being a, a problem and a hindrance, so I think that we'll, we'll see quite a bit of play going to the left and into the wall as she hits it to the right. <laughs> well, you know, that's a good point. Uh, so it's it's 1.2, but that's a good point to stress there in that this particular wall doesn't have that glaze on it so that you can't see out to watch the, the fans as they move by. It does uh, distract you a bit. It, it'll be tough just initially. They'll get used to it after the first, I would say, half of the game. Uh, but yeah, every now and then the ball will hit into a dark spot or somebody will be wearing blue clothing on the side, so it makes it tough. Oh, what a beautiful nice tense shot off the side. And of course, we've talked about Alcova a lot. She's no stranger to the finals, and she won the finals. And then take another look at this shot. She's going to cross over and use that right wall real nice and just pinch the ball right there. Uh, Letitia, even if she was up farther, wouldn't have had a chance at it. It was too flat. Nice dig. Yeah, very nice. Oh, that's too bad. Lynn, I got a question for you. We are here in Salt Lake City, uh, somewhere around 3,400 feet altitude. Do you think it's affected many of the kids at all? Oh, yeah. I've seen these kids huddling and puffing. And, mm -hmm. I mean, they're, they're not in bad shape by any means. What about the reaction of the ball, though, at this altitude? The ball's a lot livelier. It carries farther. So on ceiling balls, for instance, you might hit a real soft ceiling ball, but it will still carry and come off the back wall and give your opponent a setup. One more question there as we come into the Patricia's serve. second serve. Would this altitude favor the power hitter? Not necessarily, because unless the power player has a lot of control and is keeping their ball down, the balls are going to stay up longer and give their opponent a, okay. more time to hit it. As you can see, that was a hinder ball. Tisha brought the ball uh, pretty close to herself. Uh, not a clear shot for us to return it. Hinder, that means you do it over. What a nice pass. Good pass. Well, you are right. She is smooth. This is my first opportunity to see her. When I watched her yesterday, I was real impressed with uh, how she moved. Very nice pass into the deep mm -hmm. court. Now, Kova gave it a good try. But her backhand is what really impressed me the most. Very strong. And from all levels, from high, from low. Oh, oh that's just ball. nerves right there. Absolutely. She's, uh, she's going to have to work her way into this match. If she can just stay close in the beginning phases of this match and not get down by a lot while she works out her butterflies, then uh, she'll be okay. Well, it's a high tuition to pay, and I'm talking about lack of experience. If you could just go out there and play without the nerves and all of that, you can really do well, but it's hard to overcome. Well, that's part of the game is yeah, the nerves. It is. It certainly <laughs> is. Nice big crowd here in Prime Network exclusively here with us. A great racquetball presentation. Alcova Ice and Ogle with the serve. She won this event last year when we brought the juniors from Burnsville, Minnesota. Take another look at that, Lynn. Both players, I think, their weakness is to their right. And um, Alcova took advantage of that, served to the right, and got an ace. Well, Alcova, Isonogo with the lead. We're in the first game here at the Sports Mall of Salt Lake City. The score is 6 2. I think the butterflies are finally leaving Tisha. She's moving so gracefully and playing, I think, just good strategy right now. Trying to set herself up, Lynn. That was real 
really smart on her part to take a time out, to not let the score get too far away. Very nice. Very nice. Solid down the line. So uh, she has definitely some presence of mind to uh, have called that pass timeout. Nice setup, smart shot right there, right down the line. Lynn, is the basic rule of racquetball when you're on a right wall, bring the ball right back at yourself down that wall? Most players will not come around and cover that small part of the court down the line. They'll go and cover the whole big side of the court that's left open. So that's definitely the, the place to go, is down the line. I had a chance earlier to talk to Letitia's mother, and one would have to flip the coin as to see who is more nervous, Letitia or her mother. <laughs> this is a, a classic Alcoba backhand. What a pretty shot, straight into the corner. How do you rank a backhand form power and everything with the likes of maybe Michelle Gilman? Well, I'll tell you, there is no other than Michelle Gilman. <laughs> she's it, huh? She, she's head and shoulders above, I would say, every woman who's playing right now. No contest. Two, serve six. Very good, There's another sir. setup. Go straight. Ooh. Oh, boy. A that was a break. By Alcova. That was a big break. That was a good example of the altitude. That that, that BB back wall would have been an easy setup in the front court, but mm -hmm. it carried so far she had no chance to do anything other than just keep it up on the wall. Uh, nice pass. pass shot. Absolutely. That's Alcova's game. She talked earlier about her strategy was to keep Letitia in deep court. A lot of passes, a lot of ceiling balls. Not try to kill every shot. Very smart. Six serves three. Second serve. Oops. Oh, my. Now that, that was just not thinking. That's not a case of nerves on her no, part. Oh, no, that's, that's just a muff. That's blank brain. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Six. There's a setup. Straight down the line. Very Excellent. nice. Excellent shot. I think Alcova wanted a screen on that call, but the ref did not think so. Well, Letitia's dad must be an outstanding coach, because Don Bustle, because she really has the basics down of this game and where you are on the court. Ooh, Ooh good wow. cover, almost. She was going for the pinch. She knew where Alcova was going. It was just a little too low. Both these players sponsored by the great company, Ectalon. I want to take this moment to congratulate Lynn Adams being named the new sports promotion director of Ectalon. And Lynn, one question is, if Letitia gets into another final, she at least deserves the right to get the name on her Ectalon sponsored shirt like we see as, uh, as an uncle's. Uh, you bet. I think so. Shoot, we could have taken a magic marker and put it on there. <laughs> well, both ladies sponsored by Ectalon, and congratulations to Lynn Adams. She's been such a, a great pioneer and, and author and everything else for, for Ectalon and for racquetball. And Lynn, I know you're excited. Very much so. It's a great company. Back to action with Alcova Eisenhower. With Fisher. Boy, how nice. You know, I think we're seeing a longer rally, and I do believe it's because of the altitude, Len. Well, both players are playing the ball fairly high. They're, they're not really putting the ball down low yet. So the ball's going to carry more, and they're going to get to more balls. But they're really starting to play some good racquetball now, I think. Like you said, the butterflies are out. Mm -hmm. they're, they're into play. There's have, that down the line. We have lines judges, and the right rear wall is Samir Hadid. And, of course, Sudzi Manchik, everybody's Mr. Personality out of New York, and left rear, and a neat young man. I really am a fan of his. I tell you, all these juniors are so inspiring to me. This is one of my favorite events to come to. Well, with these 600 uh, participants starting at the beginning of the weekend, they're, they're playing for more than just the title that we're seeing in front of us. They're playing as it comes down to the 40, or maybe 44, members that are going to be chosen for the junior national team. Then I don't know how they do it. They dwindle that number down to 14.
right. and they'll be doing an awful lot of traveling around the United States, but then they take that number down to six, which is an impossibility. How do you choose from all that greatness? I want to comment on that one shot there, how she let it come off the back wall to the front. But those six in the juniors get to travel around the world representing the United States, so we have a great amount. Now this is an altitude shot. Very rarely does the, the ball travel from the back wall all the way to the front wall before it takes another bounce. And Letitia took advantage of Alcova's problem with taking it off of the front wall and just pinched it real nice in the front corner. I think that's the first time I've seen it come off the back wall to the front wall in the last 10 or so events we've televised. Right. That's I really just, you'll that. only see that in altitude. Mm -hmm. the ref just called a footfall on Letitia, so she's in her second serve. Did she get that? You got to appeal it. You can't ask. It. Alcova, watch this. Let's see if she got that. Alcova There's won't the appeal. Pinch. She just. Oh my Ooh, goodness! That I can't close. tell. I, I don't know either. Well, Alcova's not appealing. I certainly would have. It's part of the good Anything process. Anything close? Absolutely. You Any championships? Bet. Why not? Five serving ten. Oh, too bad. Letitia has gotten several shots over on her forehand side that she skipped. Easy setups, and uh, boy, this is not a good time to do it. There's that backhand. Great opportunity to see that form, Lynn. Oh, I love this angle. Ooh, what a pretty dive. It always amazes me when people dive because I've never done it personally. I've fallen down a lot, but not actually dove. Then let me ask you now, that's the second footfall in the last couple of moments. The referee, Tom Neal, has called on Letitia. Are we talking back foot, front foot? Front exactly foot. what's the footfall? Uh, you can be on the line to start your motion, and you can be on the line when you finish your motion, just not totally out of the box. So what has happened is her front foot has gone totally over the red line in the front. You know, we have Jim Heiser down on the sidelines, and I'd like to ask Jim Heiser a question if we can. Jim, the, the questionable pickup there by Letitia looked very, very close. It happened right in front of you. From your vantage point, did she get that, or was that a double bouncer? Uh, there was no question. She got it, Jim. She had a racket cleanly underneath. Okay, excellent. Another long rally going. Tell you what, Letitia's not backing down to the experience in the championships that have already been won by Alcoba. Nope. She should put this away. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Very nice shot. Long rally. There's an altitude lay down right there, that's for oh, sure. Oh, that was great. <laughs> she has an easy setup right here. And unfortunately, I think she, she got her feet all mixed up and kind of <laughs> tripped as she went. Let's see, we'll just watch her feet here. Because I'm pretty sure that's what happened. Yep, there it is. She, uh... <laughs> really, too, in all fairness, we do have to remind people that's we are great. in Salt Lake City. It is 3,400 foot altitude up, up around here. And a lot of these folks coming from uh, sea level and everywhere about America, uh, even if you come up just a half a block, it might get some. We're way up. That long rally took both of them, uh, took its toll on both of them. And um, they're both huffing and puffing. Now would have been a good time for either one of them to just raise their racket and take a few extra seconds before they continued with the rally. Nice pinch in the left uh, corner. That's an outstanding shot. Well, Tish is uh, making a run here. Alcova needs to slow her down a little bit. That's great. That's a nice setup shot, too. She could put her body in there. Good call, Alcova. Alcova, they, as you said, they're both huffing and puffing a little bit. Alcova decides to call timeout, re regroup herself on the serve. Alcova Isonogo with the lead here in the Ladies Juniors Championships from the Sports Mall in Salt Lake City. We're going to be right back. The score is 10-7. Kova Eisnogel with the serve, first serve, and she has the lead in the first game of the uh, ladies' championships here in Salt Lake City. The score is 10-7.
in a moment as we get into this, we've got a very interesting bystander sitting downstairs, and of course that's the father of Letitia Bustle. In a moment, we'll go to Jim Heiser and talk to Mr. Bustle and see if he's uh, got all those nerves that his daughter does. Why don't we do that right now while we've got the opportunity? Jim Heiser has Letitia's father. Well, Letitia looks like she started off a little bit nervous, but she seems to lost the jitters. Yeah, well, she's getting the confidence in her serve. And, uh, she can make that happen. She can stay in the game when she gets confidence in her serve. And, uh, she's playing even right now with Alcova. Yeah, and uh, I just hope she continues. Alcova's tough. But both of them have jitters a little bit, but they're working out of jitters. Against the the ball now. Yeah, and I'm not too sure, Jim, if the father doesn't have as much jitters as the daughter. By the way, Lynn, during that run, uh, Alcova wanted uh, a screen, screen serve, and Tom Neal did not give it to her at all. And you have to keep playing. You have to you keep playing. Stop. That's right. You can't stop. And uh, unfortunately, ugh, dug that out. Letitia had a pretty easy forehand set up off the back wall after that rally and uh, just dumped it right into the floor. There's another easy forehand set up. Right back, yeah. Of course, Letitia playing out of Idaho. I believe the, her hometown, I believe it's Mountain, Mountain Home, Home, Idaho, but up in and around Boise where the great Michelle Gilman is from. That. Is it the air in Idaho? What do you think it is? Potatoes? <laughs> the spuds, maybe. The, yeah, they all eat all, all those potatoes. Um, a little bit about why Letitia is, is skipping those easy forehand setups. For those of you that play racquetball, anytime the ball gets too close to your body, you get too anxious, the ball gets real close to you, you get kind of jammed up, your racket tends to head towards the floor a lot more often. You want to keep away from the ball so you can have a nice full swing. Letitia's just just too anxious. Get well, too Lynn, oftentimes I've introduced you as, as we've done these at various events everywhere in the country as being an author. I know you have your book out about racquetball. Do you go into all phases and forms of the basics of racquetball? Oh, definitely. I mean, there, there are reasons why balls skip and why they roll out. Ooh, there's a nice rollout as we speak well, of rollout. She has a magnificent backhand. See if there's any hinder in, 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 in about right there it was. Right no, there it was. nope, they're, they're nice and clear. Because uh, Letitia asked Alcova if she wanted to hinder, and, and Alcova said no. Well, anytime you've got two people in an enclosed area, you're, you're going to tend to get pretty close. But they, they're good at keeping their distance and giving the other person the full swing. No, well, it's only 20 by 40 out there on that court. And sometimes it feels like 10 by 10. <laughs> you're digging for the same spot. We have the luxury of three cameras today, and I just absolutely have, uh, since uh, our director and boss are here, part of our broadcast team, uh, our AARA telecast, and that's Lee Feldman. We were able to bring in the overhead little cam. We call it the little mini cam, and it's one that many people around the NBA watch because it's on the backboard of the baskets, and I think you get such a magnificent view over here. There it is right there. That's a great view. The grace of the players what, moving in. What this about. view gives you is really good court positioning. It lets you know uh, where the players are in reference to each other and to the ball. It's a real pretty view. Lakova is taking uh, taking the lead here. Oh, what a serve! What How's a it? serve! Two. Two aces in a row there for point 14 and point 15. Take a and look at that. And to the right. Mm. And Letitia just does not move to her right as smoothly as she does to her left. But what a great time for Letitia, who came on there in the mid part of this game. Final was 15 8. Of course, we've got another game to go. And if Letitia wins that, we go to the third game. That goes to 11. That's called the tiebreaker. I have a feeling Letitia, with the help of her father, her coach, Don, going to come out and maybe regroup and gather herself a little bit. So while we're in this game break, we'll go to a break with you. A reminder, we're in Salt Lake City at the beautiful athletic club here. It's called the Sports Mall. And we're back with everybody here at the Junior Olympic Racquetball Championships at the Sports Mall in beautiful Salt Lake City, Utah. The weather's been fantastic. Hey, we've had a little bit of snow on the mountains. We've had some extreme hot weather, near 100. And today, an awful lot of rain. And that's what you get when you're in the mountains. And Lynn Adams, uh, Alcova Isonogo won the first game. How about those stats? What do they tell us? 
Well, I think the biggest key is Letitia's unforced errors, which is in the 10 range, and Alcova only had four. And then you look at the kill shots, and it shows Letitia with 10, and Alcova only with seven, but that is an indication that Alcova really likes the passing game a lot more than the kill shot game. Well, you know, an interesting note, too, there with the aces by uh, Alcova, her third ace was on point 14, her fourth ace, was on point 15 in her victory in the fourth championship in That's the, right. in the uh, first game. And, and three of those aces were to Letitia's yeah. forehand. And this could be the finale, if you will, uh, for just a great junior's career for uh, Elkova. She's been terrific. She she's told me I thought it was her final one, too. She told me she's back? got another one next oh year. I'm going, goodness. golly, you've been here for ages. That's right. Ages. She's going to Stanford. Well, she can come back. She won this That's very right. event last year. She may well do that again this year. I don't know if she will, but when you look at her bio, it looks like well, it looks Starting like to look like Michelle's bio. Michelle's isn't it? <laughs> or or a Lynn Adams for that matter. She a lot really of is terrific. In there. Yeah, she's a, had a chance to talk with her dad last night and uh, uh, her, all of her relatives. Of course, we've got Rusty Eisenogle. What? Jared. Jared. Jared I mean, that's a serious. It's a conglomerate. Yeah, it is. That's a serious racquetball family, and uh, everybody's really, really okay, proud of her. Me? Not only for being the outstanding go. female athlete Can of the year in the juniors, the fact that she's going to Stanford. And a very, very, very outstanding me? student. Yes. By the way, Lynn, part of being named for those 40, then down to 14, then down to the final elite six Bustle that will travel the world, it's not just playing ability. Right. We're talking about a third, a third, a third of zero scholastic, serves, of citizenship, and then playing ability. I think that's an excellent way to determine a playing team, especially at the junior Point. level. Well, you know what was interesting last night at the banquet, as it's a side out on Letitia One gets the score, zero. a lot of the kids that were alternates, now they, they came in, they had four point grade averages, and that's what was the determinant. Yep. I think that's great. Side out. Double side out here. We're in the second game. No score Zero is yet. Nope. One. Zero serving one. Excuse me. One of the things that uh, I don't think happened in the first game on either side was it didn't look like there was much of a plan yeah. on scoring and winning rallies. I think that they both just kind of played the ball as it came. And just in the very first few rallies, and there's another another indication right there, is that I think Alcova is going to go more to Letitia's forehand. I think she has a little bit more solid strategy coming in right now. I notice Alcova getting off to herself in between the game there and, and, and going through that strategy that you're talking about. And, of course, Letitia, new to this level of championship play, talking with her dad, who's her coach, and, and they're trying to formulate what they want to do, hopefully hoping to push it into the tiebreak. Well, she's got to take setups like that and not leave it up for, for Alcova for another shot. Oops. I don't know what right. happened there. Sounded like the ball broke. Two, By the way, we've had one. a lot of the balls break this week up here. It must be the altitude. Oh, it's, these kids just hit the bejeebies <laughs> out of the ball. It's yeah. unbelievable. I know we're watching the uh, ladies. Uh, you know, last year when we were watching the men's juniors, ball, Johnny out. Ellis, who won the juniors last year in Minnesota, lost the national open championships this year in, in the Houston finals. to Chris Cole in the finals. That kid can hit it. Oh. He clearly hits it harder than anyone I've seen play the game. Perfect serve. There's her first ace well, of the match. She thought that was going to come off the side wall, then back wall, and look what happens. It caught the, caught the crack, and uh, Alcova gave it a good try there. Didn't, couldn't quite catch up with it. Two serves, two. That's her third footfall. I think I'd appeal that because she didn't Second look like she was serve. over the line to me. She could get her first serve back on that, but they have a rule uh, in amateur racquetball that you only have so many appeals. And if you make an appeal out. and both line judges agree Two with the referee, serves. that appeal is counted against you. I do have a question for you, though. On this level, when, when they're going for the national team, Point. Is it held against them if they appeal? Is it held against them? Yeah, well, for example, I watched a youngster last Three year in the, in the uh, National Juniors, and he appealed everything. And I was wondering, since he didn't make the juniors, so if that might have been held against him a little bit. You know what I mean? I wouldn't some think people so. have the viewpoint. Yeah. We'll get to that point. Let's take another look at this. That's a, oh, a boy, reach, that's reach backhand, and uh, probably not one that she tried, but it, it turned out real nice for Back her. Back to the point. 
Uh, they go on citizenship, playing ability, scholastic ability. If if they're viewed in any way as a complainer, and I don't think, I don't think appealing is a complaint type attitude. I think Excellent it's how you how you would appeal. Okay. Um, the act of appealing Second is, serve. I mean, that is your right, and but and that's see, why there's three point. people. Letitia should have appealed. I got her first serve back. I wonder if that's not in your mind sometimes at this level. And that could be experience also, not knowing when to appeal. Well, it's probably and, more, and, uh, more of that than anything else. Three serves two. I love to see this Point. game go into a tiebreaker. Boy, oh boy. Well, oh Letitia is having lots of opportunities Four and is, is not two. capitalizing on him. She needs to raise her level up a little bit here. Because she's getting lots of, lots of high shots that Alcova is getting, giving. Skip ball, side out. A voice you're hearing, skip ball side out. That's Tom Two Neal. Four. He is our referee on the day. He's from Albuquerque and an outstanding men's open player in his own right. Long. Second serve. Foot fault. Oh, appeal that. Appeal side that. Out. There oh, you go. Did. There's been an appeal I called, I called a foot fault. Call stands and it'll be an appeal charge. Both the lines judges agree. She's, She's got to go charge. all the way over. If any part of her foot, uh, that sure is a good call. I don't know how he saw that. <laughs> I don't know how Tom saw that one. I really don't. <laughs> and it was on an ace second serve. Yeah. That's that's incredible. He must have somebody Four sitting over there on the serves side. Two. Ooh, beautiful Point power eight. backhand down the alley. Five serves two. Ooh, almost. Point. Now it's real. Jim is down uh, in the crowd, and it'd be real interesting to know what what the buzz is Six down there because the crowd's gotten quiet all of a sudden. If anyone's talking down there, anybody saying anything? Sorry. Jim? No, it looks Second like it's very serve. silent down here. I think the feeling is right now. If Tisha doesn't get a few points soon, this is going to be over with very quickly. Is Alcova talking to anybody down there in a coaching situation? Uh, James Molcock, who is also a member of the junior team, is her coach. And mm -hmm. when she came out, they, uh, James just said, do the same thing you've been doing. Well, that seems like good advice. <laughs> well, Letitia has called a timeout, uh, well-timed, if you will. She's behind 7-2, certainly trying not to let this get completely out of hand. Alcova Eisnogel with the victory in the first game, 15-8. The lead now in the second game, 7-2. We'll be back with you for the Junior Racquetball Championships in Salt Lake City, Utah. And there's the score of the second game, led by Alcova Eisnogel, 7-2. She has the serve, and uh, Lynn, I think we're going to get a chance to find out about some kill shots. Well, there's been a, a big switch around here. Mm -hmm. Alcova's gone Seven up with four kill shots two. to Letitia's one, which is kind of different than the first game, that uh, Letitia was the one that was putting the ball down low, and Alcova was out. doing more passing. You know, Lynn, there's so many people who need to be congratulated here. Of course, two, these 600 seven. playing participants, but you also have to understand that the moms and dads came in all over America, brought their kids here, so I congratulate them. I want to specifically congratulate the state of Oregon. They brought the most youngsters in, 40 junior participants, and that's phenomenal. Massachusetts bringing in 32, and uh, you can't forget mom and dad when we're talking about juniors. All over America, they came here to Salt Lake City, Utah. Letitia took, took her timeout and Point. did exactly what a timeout is for, calmed herself down, came back in, has won the next two points. Four, so seven. she's back in this match in a big way, 4 7. Can't do anything but help her confidence. What a nice backhand on the back wall, side wall. Wow. Yeah, use that side wall uh, because it is darker. So sometimes when you hit it into the side wall, like she does right here, Alcova is maybe a step. A little bit late going to the ball. That camera Five, gives us the ability to show the true athleticism that's sitting out there on this relatively small court. It's only 20 by 40. There's a setup. Lots of setups. Why are bringing it right back to each other? There, yeah. There's the kill finally. Yeah, now Kova just talked to her himself and yeah. she said it's about time. It's enough, yeah. 
There it is. Very shot. nice backhand. Nice, flat, smooth, Seven, all the way around. No, no little pokey shot there. Ooh, there's the backhand I saw yesterday. And tried to get creative with the serve by taking some power off of it, and, and Letitia just laid on that ball. Watch this. Well, we're not going to be able to see it. Take our word. Look at this. Alcova definitely top, took yeah. some pace off the ball. Oh. And, ooh, you see a big shoulder rotation. She knew exactly that she'd killed that ball. She just went rocking right up to the Five, service so box. Seven. And then some more great news last night at the uh, awards banquet for all the junior participants, all the players and their parents, is the new junior head coach's name, former professional racquetball player and a guy that's always put everything into racquetball. Right and that's Jerry Halisher. His assistants are going to be Hart Johnson. And Dot Fischel is going to be assistant. I think it's great. Watch this. Now we this, do have some question on this one. Yeah, it was a real pretty backhand, and she thinks that Alcova got it on two. Well, we had a split decision on the back judges. They One couldn't see it, and Sudzi Monsik said that he disagreed, so we're going to have to That looked like two to me. Now we're going to do it over. Ooh, what nice serve. Great serve. I good don't. Try. I think she's going to appeal. She is. No, well, she's no? asking for the screen. It was a good serve, but she Ooh. thinks it's going too close to Letitia's body, and that the ref is not calling the screen. She's mad. Uh, yeah, she is mad. All right, uh, uh, Alcova Snuggles mad because what a nice run Letitia Bustle has made from 7-2. It's now 7-6, and I tell you, this can do nothing but good for Letitia if she just hangs in there, remembers what she got to do, because folks, as I'm looking here off to the side that you can't see, Alcova is a little mad. Let's take a short pause. We'll be back with you. We're gonna find out the suspense that's growing here in Salt Lake City. Well, it was an emotional timeout, if you will, by uh, Alcova Isanogo. The score is seven, excuse me, six serving seven. That is the fifth footfall that has been called on Letitia Bustle, it's second serve. Let's see if uh, one is growing in confidence and the other one can control her temper right now. Ooh. Oh. Letitia's yeah. definitely on a roll. Alcova has asked for a screen seven, on about five seven. different occasions, and I think she's just getting a little frustrated that it's not happening. Well, it was a rather easy victory in that first game for Alcova. The second game, and it's all tied up, and there's that mistake that Letitia has made. A definite kill. Uh, Could have taken the lead shot. and didn't do it. Yep, seven, easy shot. She just got real seven. close to the ball and a little over anxious. Short. But she's, she's feeling a little bit more confidence now. Yeah, but you know what? You can't take that experience away from her. Oh, she's played. Look at that kid. Oh, she tried to do too Phenomenal. much with the ball there. What Should an have athlete. just gone up to the ceiling. Man, that's an athlete. Oh, that yeah. is an unbelievable move. Watch this effort. Oh, it's I didn't a real think pretty backhand, it. and she just oh, boy. extends totally out to get that ball. That was that gorgeous. That's something. And then, unfortunately, Letitia tried to do too much with the next shot when there Eight was really no shot seven. there to do anything with. Eight serving seven. All right, so it's side out. Letitia Bustle will have the serve, and she's brought it back to a tight Seven. game. Seven serving eight. eight. I think Alcova needs to go back to, I think, her original strategy, which was to keep it over to Letitia's forehand, because Letitia's now cranking on that backhand. Ooh, I think she let uh, uh, Alcova's body bother her on that ball. Yeah. Eight serve seven. Short. Second serve. No, two bounces. Good call. Good call. Good call by Tom Miller. Tough to be a referee when that ball's flying around like that. Good call. That's a, an Seven. interesting move that Letitia did was coming around and taking that ball with her forehand because then what happens is you have a clear view of the whole court. Mm -hmm. Nice forehand. Point. She really set up on that one. That was a full swing. Alcova is just, boy, she's just flinging herself after well, those balls. It's she, great. And that's also on that, that hit there, the follow through by Letitia. The second time Alcova has been hit with Letitia's racket. She's well, then really Alcova's playing, playing too, a little too close then. Playing a little tight. Point. 
Could it be that we're going to go to a tiebreaker? Nine, Nine serves, serves eight. eight. We've had a big switch over in the kill shots where when we first talked about it, uh, Alcova had four to Letitia's one. Now we've had a total turnaround where Alcova's only got five and Letitia's gone up to seven. We're in the second game. It's eight serving eight nine. Serves nine. Alcova Isinogo with the serve. She rather handily won that first game, 15-8. Oh. oh, wow. Side out. That was a really, really wide angle That's pinch. An old pinch. <laughs> looked to me like the old squash splat shot. Look almost. Watch this. Almost a, what do they call those, a boast or something? The ball got off behind her, and that was really her only choice of shots, and it, it turned out very well. That was nice. Hold it. Both players realized that that was a screen. Yeah. Tom did not call it. That's that's what, where Alcova was getting very frustrated. Yep. Was because Second it was pretty obvious and uh, didn't quite get the call. She's pushing now. She needs yeah. to uh, take a timeout, Might maybe regroup bit, herself. I, I totally agree with you, Lynn. Absolutely. Jim Turner and Lynn Adams with you here for the ladies' final championship. The second game, Letitia Bustle has made quite a run at it after losing the first right game on. to Elkova Isinogo. And now in the second game, she does have the lead with uh, Elkova eight serving 8-10. Eight She's just bringing it back to her. Right? Mm. Ooh, almost. Alcova is definitely in the, about the last six or seven serves, taking pace off of her serve. I think she's trying to keep it off of the back wall so Letitia doesn't have a chance to crank on it. But didn't nice work that time. That was a nice get. Set up. There it is. Side out. Well, she, as I, I made the statement before, she's been taught very, very well with the basics. And here's another great example. Ah, oh, it's so pretty when you mm -hmm. see a nice swing like that. Ten serves nine. There's to the forehand. You notice Letitia was way over on the left anticipating a backhand because that's where Alcova keeps hitting it to her. That was very smart on Alcova's part. Get it over to that Short. forehand. Second serve. Good shot. shot. It's amazing that she's cutting those balls off on the fly because they would be setups off of the back wall. Uh, but she's been cutting those on the fly every time. Short. Second serve. She has quite a reach. She's not as quick as El Cole, but she does, because of that reach, have a tendency to get to that ball. Yeah, she's, she's nice and tall and lanky. Oh, what a pinch shot. She owns that left corner. Pretty nice to be compared with the great Michelle Gilman, but that's Michelle's patented trademark right there. That left corner pinch, backhand, wow. Well, I think just about anywhere three inches or below on the front wall is patented Michelle Gilman territory. <laughs> that might have been a screen, but I guess not. Michelle came down on Sunday. I thought it was really neat. She's getting married on July 4th, and she and her fiance drove four hours from Idaho to uh, just check in and say hi to everybody and their friends. And cause this is the first year that, well, no, I guess this is the second year that she hasn't played. She's got a lot of friends here. And then that last so shot that uh, Alcova could not get to is another one of those altitude ones. It came off way Short. too quick off the back wall. Yep, couldn't just keep up. Absolutely. By the way, uh, Michelle stopping by to say hi. Chris Cole, this year's National Men's uh, Open Singles Champ. Uh, you saw that great game that he won over Johnny Ellis. Well, he's here in attendance out of appreciation as well. Boy, We've got a lot of great racquetball players, as, of course, the, the avid followers. 11 serves 9. Well, it's real interesting to look at the stat page Short. of this match. Uh, Letitia's now up to 13 kill shots Second to Alcoba's 6. 
And Akova has seven unforced errors to Letitia's four. Um, Alkova has kind of done a little fall Skip apart ball. here. But she's still in the match. And that's, that's a sign of a really talented player to not be playing great ball and still be in the match. And you can see the score. Alkova Isnogo with the, uh, with the uh, serve. She's behind 9-11. We're at the sports mall. We're going to be back to find out exactly if Letitia can throw this in to the tiebreaker. Great shot of uh, Letitia Bustle in the timeout, having a little drink of water. And she has made a major, major turnout. She was behind at one point, ladies and gentlemen, in this game, 7-2. She now she's leads 11-9. That might tell us right there, Lynn. And she's got those 13 kill shots to uh, Alcova's six. She's putting the ball down. Well, and there's always good coaching that goes on on the sidelines and stuff. And Elkova was talking with her friend and boyfriend, I, I should say. That was her brother. Was that, her, was that her brother? That was her brother, Okay, yeah. and Jim Heiser was listening in to some of the coaching tendencies and, and uh, some ideas. Jim, what were they talking about? What was Elkova being told? Well, Elkova was very frustrated. She says, I can't kill the ball. I can't keep the ball down. Her brother was telling her not to be so defensive, to be a little more aggressive. And she says, well, I can't do it. I keep skipping it or I keep leaving it up. So she's very frustrated right now. Is that an altitude frustration, you think? Or is she just not playing that well? I don't think she's playing that well, to be really honest with you. She seems to be standing up at a lot of shots and missing a lot of shots that she usually puts away. Well, Lynn made the point a little while ago, and, and I think it's one worth uh, saying again. She is allowing Letitia more and more shots, the second and third shot, to try to put it away and win this game. Well, she had made the comment earlier about you know playing her game, playing smart. Oh, uh, what a ball. shot. Oh, and I, it I skipped. Oh, it did skip. Oh, well, okay. Let and me I do think with you again. I'm sorry. We're going. <laughs> <I'm> sorry. <laughs> oh, I don't know about that one. You could tell that one by the sound. Mm -hmm. That was a sound skip. You know, there's that shot again, and that's the fifth one we've seen in the game and a half or so. Into that, the sidewall. And, and she has been so successful. Look at this. This is a great angle to see it right into the sidewall, and it's a nice pinch. Do you hit down on that a little bit when you're on yes. the side glass? Yes. You hit down. Just slightly. Mm. 11 serving 10. Second game. If Letitia wins it, it throws it into the tiebreaker. They'll get about a three minute Short. break, gather themselves up, and go Second to 11 serve. points. And in that game, you only get two timeouts as opposed to the three you have in the regular games. Her brother gave her excellent advice of not to be playing so defensive, which Alcova is. And she responded by saying, well, I can't keep the ball down, I can't keep the ball down. It is worse to lose playing defensive than to lose going for it. You're right, but this rally once again shows exactly that Alcova is giving Letitia the second, third, and fourth attempt to put the ball away. That's because Alcova is not trying to kill the ball. She gets her setups and is trying to pass too much at this point. That, that should have been going for a kill Side shot. Out. Well, there is some substance in this one for Third sure. 12. I don't think anybody in any way thought that Alcova was going to have anything, maybe not a walkthrough, but certainly an easy victory. And look what we've got, a good chunk. There's a kill. But you can't just go for the for the winning shots 11, on the dead setups. Sir, you have 12. to have the guts to do them on your marginal setups. Also, you have to play to win, not play to not play safe. Three walls, Three walls serve, so it's a, a, a second serve. I, a question for you: If Alcova scores, right now, would this not be a great time for Letitia to call a timeout? Oh, definitely. Yeah. There's some old gym rat type of ball. Get it down, guys. Oh, you know what? She could have already had this game in the bag, and we could have been going into the third uh, into the third game. She's missed 12, three 12. right here in the last uh, four or five points. She made a comment uh, when she played Alcova in the World Boys. Games that when she won the game, good call, Letitia, very good. She's calling a timeout. Timeout. That when she played Alcova, 
when she was in the tiebreaker, she got really nervous because all of a sudden she realized that she might be able to win, and that totally freaked her out. Well, we need to kind of reset something here. You can see the easy victory that Alcova had in the first part. The first part of the second game, she also had a 7-2 victory. Letitia brings it back with a very, very nice lead. Alcova kind of loses her temper at herself, and the referee calls a quick timeout. But now she has an opportunity to win her second straight junior championships and we're going to resume play we'll find out if Elkova could do it but let's take this break from the sports mall in Salt Lake City certainly want to welcome everybody back to Prime Network's coverage of racquetball the very best in racquetball and Jim Heiser had an opportunity during that timeout to listen to some more strategy uh, for Elkova Isonova what was said in that timeout Jim well, her coach once again said, put some pace on the ball, be really aggressive, put a lot of pressure on her right now because she's making some mistakes. Just, there's another one. Yeah, yeah but that, there's, a, there's a mistake on the part of Letitia, a, a nice way to get it to, to uh, well, I'm not sure now, our referee, did he say 13 or 14? I thought he said 13. Okay, that, our scoreboard shows the match is over. Okay. That's a heck of a nice comeback by both of those fine young competitors. Letitia made a great comeback when she was behind 7-2, took the lead. And I think there's no question that the experience won that for Elkova. Don't you think, Lynn? Yes. Uh, I would be interested to ask Letitia if um, when she did have the lead and, and saw yeah. the window of actually winning that game, yeah. if that kind of set her off a little bit. You know what, Lynn? We're, we're going to take a, ch a, a look here at the final point. It's a nice sea serve. Yeah. And she had a backhand shot at it, but just left it right up in the middle. Boy, the and that's out. the kind of shot that you have to do. You have to take not an easy setup, but the shot but to put again, it away. once again, that's the kind of shot in the last five the points that Letitia was given and skipped. She Couldn't. could have won this game. You yes. know she's going to come back and look at this tape, and it's going to be good. The last, when we were in Houston at the Nationals, you said, the loss was going to be good for Johnny Ellis. And I, being in my football career, I've never thought a loss is good for anything but the garbage can. <laughs> but it could help. She had oh, a chance to so win much. this game, this, yes. this particular second game. Yes. It's too bad, but that was a nice match. Well, we're going we're gonna to come back, everybody. We want you to stay with us because we're going to talk about the highs and lows of the uh, championship here. We're going to talk to the winner, Elkova Isonogo. Well, maybe everybody, we have a dynasty in the making because Lynn Adams is now at courtside with the victor, Elkova Isonogo. And just quickly, Lynn, this is her third championship in a row. Well, I'm here with Alcova, the third time junior women's national champion. That's very impressive. Uh, tell me a little bit about how you felt today. You were diving all over the court, and I haven't seen you dive that much. Any particular reason? Um, I was feeling really slow on my feet, and so I got kind of desperate, and I just kind of flung my body at the ball <laughs> because that was the only way I thought I could actually get to the ball because I was feeling so slow today. I was feeling really sluggish. Uh, do you think it had anything to do with altitude or anything with Amsterdam? I know you just came back from a junior trip to Amsterdam that was kind of uh, exhausting. No, not really. It's just problems. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Well, this is the third time that you've won this championship, and you got pushed. It looked like maybe you were going to go a tiebreaker. Did yeah. it feel like that, that you were going to go a little bit more than you thought you would go? Yeah, I thought it was definitely going to get to be a tiebreaker, but she let me in at the last minute there, so I, I was really lucky <laughs> in that. You, you've been in that situation before where sometimes nerves play, play a part. Do you think that she was looking too far ahead and that that's what you capitalized on? Maybe. I think she might have gotten a little anxious when she thought, I'm ahead and maybe I could win this game. And so maybe she got a little nervous thinking about winning the game instead of thinking about just playing the points. The very last point that you won the match on, and I, just to go off of, very briefly, I think the sign of an excellent racquetball player is one who maybe isn't playing their best ball but wins anyway. That, that's a, that's a, a tribute to you. But the last shot that you made, you just took it right from the chest and drove it into the corner. <laughs> she goes, yes, I did, Lynn. Thank you very much. <laughs> well, that looked like an Alcova shot to me, and you, you, there was no hesitation. Where A little bit earlier, you had hesitated on some shots. Yeah. I was feeling, I don't know, it was, my power was gone, and I was just, I feel like I was just swinging at the ball, and nothing was happening, and so I, but at the end, I just, 
I mean, you just do what you're used to doing. So if you, the less time you have to think about it, I think the better for me when I'm in the in such a situation where I'm not playing as well as I should. Well, I was impressed by the match, and I think the fans really enjoyed it a lot. And I'm going to send it back up to Jim. This is Alcova, three-time national champion, and Lynn Adams. Back to you, Jim. Hey, Lynn, thank you, and our congratulations as well as everybody to Alcova Isanogel, her third junior championships. It's fantastic. And stay with us because we've got the young men in their championship coming up. Jim Heiser is going to join me in a moment. We're at the Sports Ball in Salt Lake City, Utah.